This is Chris from Alternative Control, sitting here with Mike from Yob. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You oh are. God. Absolutely. You got it. We, we had this fear that it was going to be like Y-O-B or something like that when we got here. <laughs> no, we've been we've been plagued by that for a while, but no, it's Yob. You got it. Excellent. Um, anyway, first question. Most suitable question to start with. How's the tour going so far? It's awesome. Yeah? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been good. Enslaved is a uh, real privilege to be on the right now. Great guys, great sense of humor, serious about their art, serious about life. Yeah. Um, good, good guys. Ecstatic Vision has been great to be on the ride with as well. Um, we're excited that Witch Mountain is joining us tonight because they're very, very old friends of ours. And the first uh, show we ever played in Portland was with them in 2000. 2000. Excellent. So, so you guys are actually slated to take over the headlining spot in a couple of dates, right? Is that still yeah, on, yeah, on schedule? Right. Yeah, yeah. Then it's going to be kind of our tour from there on out with Witch Mountain's main support. I'm sure the enslaved guys understand. <laughs> well, you know, their tour is going to be done. So if we were playing with them, then they would still be the headliner. Cheerfully. Excellent. Uh, is there any... Um, Big plans that you have with the set when you guys take over the headlining spot, or just more songs and more time. Yeah, more time, more songs, more time. We'll change it up periodically. Absolutely. So, you know, just you know, we have a lot of <clears throat> songs in the queue. So excellent, excellent, man. Um, so I wanted to ask, unlike other bands, you know, that have a penchant like you guys for artistic maturity, uh, you guys remain a pretty pretty bare bones live act you know it's like it's just the three up there banging your heads thrashing around it's very simple simplistic in a good way mm -hmm. and uh i was just wondering is there a reasoning behind that or do you guys see yourselves maybe incorporating i don't know wearing black cloaks in the future <laughs> <laughs> um, something, something like that you know no it's you know i mean i, I think we identify as the three music fan guys that play music and so um, as far as getting dressed up you know there's certain bands that do that that I love it and um, you know and have elaborate you know light shows and yeah, um, backdrops and, and, and yeah. things like that um, I don't it's hard to imagine us going that route we've just done it the same way for so long it's just like you said just three kind of headbangers up there you know kind of throwing everything at it like we would if we were playing in a hardcore punk band, we're just we're just trying to burn all the calories we have in us, and that's the show. And we kind of feel like the songs, if the songs aren't enough, then we're not doing our job. You it's, know? it's totally true, man. So, um, and understandably so. And uh, that, that's what I always enjoyed about you guys, the fact that like, despite, you know, you guys having really grand visions with how your music is, it's still just the three of you guys trying to let out some energy. As you said, the hardcore punk thing. I mean, you're obviously involved with, well, you have been involved with other projects that are different musically than Yob is, mm -hmm. and continue to involve yourself with other things, you know, on the side from Yob. Do these different projects, uh, are, do they get in the way of, 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 of Yob, since Yob seems to be your your number one focus, or do you always have time for these, you know, little side things? I know you, yeah. you you're into the hardcore punk, and you were talking about you know, getting involved with some crust bands and, and black metal and whatever. I mean, you seem to be, you got your your finger in a lot of different pies, so to speak. And does it ever get intrusive? Um, yeah, sometimes there's time and conflicts for sure. And if I have time for something, then and if I'm, if it's inspiring, then I'll figure it out. And, uh, but you know, I've had to turn things down that I didn't want to turn down, but I just didn't have time to do it. And so I think the ob's probably more intrusive than the other way around, but um, as far as you know, doing other projects, uh, though um, I will definitely be doing more projects. And it's just the time is has to be a little more loose around that. Right. To go with the touring schedule yeah, and everything exactly. like that. Very understandable. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your new album, okay. Clearing the Path to Ascend. Amazing album. Thank you. Was on my top ten of the of, of the mm. year for sure. Just I think you guys just. You were good before, but like with that album in particular, you guys just outdid yourselves. And can you explain a little bit of the writing process? A little something about where, the lyrically or musically, like where it kind of all stemmed from? Um, I mean, we write, we've kind of written the same way for a long time. Uh, I write more or less by myself um, on a small little amp in my, in my bedroom or in my house. And, uh, I don't think in terms of riffs, I think in terms of arrangements, like the riffs of course have to be good, 
but there has to be a collection and a flow of various things that um, that have to have kind of a flavor and an inspiration to them. And um, so I kind of wait until all that comes together and when I get a collection of things that works, then I bring it to Aaron and Travis and then we all learn it. Whatever really sticks for the three of us is what we go towards. So if there's something that I really like, but it's not gelling with the three of us, we don't do it. Um, and so the band really ultimately decides. Um, and I mean, I'll spend a lot of time working and playing, but until I get really the flavor and the, the atmosphere of the first song of the album, nothing really happens. Once I start getting that and start getting kind of what feels like what made the arc of the record tonally, then all of a sudden everything else will fall into place. And I may work two years on the first song, but then once I get that first song, the other group of songs come in weeks. Um, so it's usually pretty fast from there. Uh, lyrically, I spent a lot of time with the lyrics on this album, um, really trying to doing a lot of referencing, a lot of research, and trying to become a better writer for the album. Um, and I don't know if I did or not, but um, I spent a lot of time trying to. Well, no, I mean, I think the lyrics can come through absolutely. And I think despite some of the lyrical vagueness, it sort of means that it's up to, it really leaves a lot for the listener to sort of take in for themselves, you know? And I really feel like I get that from that album a lot. Yeah, it was a little more of a poetic approach yeah. as opposed to a literal approach. Ab though, absolutely. Though some of it, some of it's literal for me, but it's oh, yeah, of course. because I know what I meant. But, yeah. but I do feel like, you know, I don't explain lyrics. I'll explain concepts around lyrics, but not the lyrics themselves, because I do want, like you said, I want somebody to be able to take from it what they want. Exactly. And have their own kind of relationship to it. I tell people this is about this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that anymore. Like I almost feel like it's an antithesis when you're trying to get out a clear expression for yourself. Yeah. And then yet leave it open to other people to take from what they want from it. You know? And I almost felt is that like kind of like a struggle to like hit that line where you want to express what you want to express and yet leave it open to interpretation at the same time? Or is it just um, kind of a I don't I don't think about the second part. No? I, and honestly, I, I just think about, you know, the music is the medicine for us first, and so we can't really think about how it's going to be received or how people will resonate or not resonate or anything like that. You know, we're just, um, of course, we're hopeful, but that can't be the impetus um, for me. It has to just, you know, I just am working through something, and the music is the vehicle. Makes a lot of sense, man. Four mammoth tracks and clearing the path to the If I, I know I may, I'm kind of stretching it a little bit by making this comparison, but I'm such a prog nerd that I have to, but it almost feels like a Tales from Topographic Oceans for me. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> no, it does. It's sort of like four songs that take you on this sort of life-affirming journey, you know? Thanks. And uh, it brought me to sort of think about maybe some of your non-metal influences mm -hmm. when it comes to not just that record, but your sound in general. Is there any, any of note? Definitely. Um, King Crimson. Uh, for sure, uh, Towns Van Zandt, um, Joni Mitchell, Van Morrison, uh, the Swans. I think I'm misfrecking. Um, listen to a lot of Wipers and a lot of The Cure. Excellent. Also, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's definitely a lot of non-metal that went into it, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely tell when I was listening to it. I got this, this, this really kind of like this thing where like, oh, these guys got to listen to Crimson or something, man. <laughs> Just with the, the scope of it in general, without you know making music as big as Planets, but not being as pretentious as you know Tales for Topographic Oceans, but still like reaching for the same thing, especially with the last song, Marrow. Can you can Marrow just seems like. Not so much of a departure for you guys, but sort of just like it's something new and it's something on the record that you're almost not expecting when you're listening to the first three tracks. You know, mm -hmm. can you can you sort of maybe detail us on how, how Marrow came to be because it happens to be one of my favorite tracks from that year. Well, I think you know, a lot of my solo work informed that song, touring solo a lot, and uh, but also too in the arc of the album, it started out you know in kind of a dark place and. 
I kind of wanted to lead the songs and the songwriting towards a more open, kind of on the way towards healing the place. And so, um, but bittersweet. Yeah. You know, not just not just light or not just new age, but, but something that has just a touch of sadness to it, but it is also a sense largely of just something good, you know, something that feels good. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like the record almost kind of takes, like it starts in a pretty negative space. I mean, this is just how I'm interpreting it, so please call bullshit on me if you'd like, but <laughs> yeah, it starts at a very negative place and it ends up with Meryl becoming really life affirming and healing. And, I always loved that conceptual sort of, that smoothness, you know, that sort of like this, you know, transcends into this song and this transcends into this song. And that's what I feel like for me. So, what yeah. I, what I would say, what I would add to that, because I don't disagree, um, is the negative place that it starts in is from the very beginning meant to move through it and not um, put a magnifying glass on it. So in other words, it's not about wallowing and being negative. It's about feeling dark, but already wanting to move through it. And so you're looking at it rather than, than just giving into it. Excellent, man. Now, I know you wanted to keep this short, so we're definitely going to do that for you. But a couple more questions before okay. we wrap things up. Okay. I actually had a, a question that my friend told me to ask you, and I think he, took, he asked it to me as a joke, but it actually makes for maybe a kind of a good question. And he's asking why your songs are so short. <laughs> yeah. <you laughs> Basically, know. what goes into like making conceptually long pieces? Um, I've just always done it that way, and I've actually I've wanted to write shorter songs sometimes because I love seven inch records and thought, man, it'd be so awesome if we could do a seven inch, but every time I try to write something that's in that six or seven minute realm or five minute realm, it just feels like an intro, and sure enough, it ends up being an intro for something. And um, it's not like I'm incapable of writing shorter songs, but I just feel things in movements. And um, partially, it's the pace. When you're playing slower, it takes a little bit longer to get to the chorus. But uh, if you just grab the record and slow it down, it's going to take longer to get there. But um, but it's also just how I think of our music, and it just requires a certain kind of evolution and arc, and the, the tensions build longer, and I think maybe too when the releases come, they're even more climactic. Um, so it's just how I always it. It's, it's like it's not so much you set out to make a 20 minute song, it just yeah. happens to turn out that way. No, and I that's mean, always the best way to do it, right? I, I write songs until they feel done, yeah. and that could be, I mean, we have songs that are eight and a half minutes, you know, which is a short song for us. Um, but you know we've had songs that we've recorded that are 26, and it wasn't like we need six more minutes on this. It was just you write until it's done. It makes a lot of sense, man. Right, well, we're gonna wrap it up, but I want to ask one more question. I always ask this question during interviews, and it's okay. basically a touring question. It's, is there anything on this tour that you maybe like to share that was funny, entertaining, weird, strange? I don't know. Something that would tickle our readers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's lots of good moments on this tour, actually. Uh, just really hanging out with the slave in general. Um, we just, I think those guys are probably the kind of animals that have a kinship and get over this with their own lives. They, they go to where they feel turned on and, and empowered. And,